Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Krishna, I am Rajar Shidas. Welcome to Hare Krishna today. On today's program, I have a special guest with me. His Grace Chit Sukhananda Das, a direct disciple of His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada, the founder, Acharya of the Hare Krishna movement. Prabhu, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Rajar Prabhu. So, I would like to first ask our guest today, Chitsukananda Prabhu, can you please tell us something about your life before you contacted the Krishna Consciousness Movement? Where, where were you born and brought up? Well, I was born in uh, New York City and uh, that was in August 16th, 1947. And uh, I was born in a place, uh, well, <laughs> it was a multiracial area, beautiful area in New York City North Side, where George Washington actually had walked around and been around. There was a fort there that was George Washington. And my mother, was she was very religious. I was born in a Catholic, Roman Catholic household. And my mother, from a very young age, taught me about uh, the Catechism and the saints and, and Jesus and Mother Mary. And uh, so that was basically my foundation. But my mother one time told me, she says, something happened when you were a young boy. I guess you must have realized that death existed. And, and you know, for all children, when they first realize that death exists, it's a very, it impacts you. And you really feel really, when you realize that death finally exists and you see people dying, relatives or friends, oh, it's I was very troubled. So uh, my mother says, explained to me, says, you woke up or you couldn't sleep and you came to me and you asked me um, where do people go when they die? So my mother said, well being a Christian mother she says son, a young boy, three four years old, she said they go to heaven and I said mama, no. She says no, then where do they go? I said, they go into new babies. You said that? I told her, ah, they go into new babies. And so, my mother said, you better go to sleep, son. And she called my mother, my grandmother, her mother, mm -hmm. and said, look at this boy. He's, he just said that, I told him that people die, they go to heaven, and he told me, no, they take uh, life in new babies. I says, what is all this? Where did he learn that? <laughs> so my grandmother who had studied some, I think Ramakrishna and some Vedic teaching and had a very open mind, she says, oh, that's reincarnation. He must have learned that in another life. He says, you believe in that? So my, my grandmother said, yes, of course. And so, so she said, he says, in another life? He says, I don't know. Well, this is all too confusing for me. So he says, I don't know if the Catholic Church accepts this, so I don't know why we, so she hung up on my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Huh? Yeah. Um, well, maybe there's a connection. Perhaps you can tell us something about your inspiration, uh, your contact with, you know, Srila Prabhupada and the Krishna Consciousness Movement. So what happened was, as I grew older, yeah, I one day was cutting a piece of meat that a friend of mine, a girlfriend, she served me some meat and a steak and it was a rare steak and so the blood was all over the plate and I looked at the blood I must have been 17, 18 years old and when I saw that blood I said oh no, I cannot do this anymore I'm not a vampire, how can I drink blood? so I said God, please help me be vegetarian. I don't want to kill any more animals. They also have life and they have the right to live. I don't want to do this anymore. So, 
Reincarnation, vegetarianism, was already in me. And I became a vegetarian. Never again did I touch a piece of meat. And I'm going on 65. You're talking about that's before you came in contact before with Srila Prabhupada? Yes. That's interesting. See, the Lord is preparing me. I was a man of faith. I've always had faith in God. And um, I always have felt that I had a personal relationship with Him. Only thing is, I didn't know exactly who God was. Because sometimes you hear, like Jehovah in the Bible says, what is the meaning? He says, I am who I am. So I said to myself, that's not very descriptive. I, <laughs> I didn't know. But then, so time went on. And in 1968, I decided to leave New York City because U.S. Army was calling. Oh, <laughs> They wanted me to go to Vietnam to kill my brothers in Vietnam. But I was a love and peace man. I was a bit of a hippie myself, to be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we were rebelling against the killing, the wars, uh, and I was rebelling against animal slaughter. So this is... But I was a clean hippie, and, uh, and I never left my faith in God. And I knew that He would lead me someday to the right place. So I wasn't attracted to go anywhere, to any religion, not even my own, because they would eat you know, they would have their sermons, they would have their, and then they have a big barbecue after, killing animals. So I said, no, those are my brothers. I don't see humans only as my brothers. This I understood before I met Krishna, before I met Prabhupada. I understood that all beings are my brothers, and they have the right to live like I want to live. So I decided, time to go. And I left before I took any oath, and any commitment to the army, I decided to go. And there's a more detailed story. Sometime if you want, I will act it out. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing some acting and sports. And uh, I was on Broadway with this company that was doing a, a play called Hair. And I was ready to get in. And all of a sudden, the problem with the army came. But before, every night I was hearing in that play, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. So I was hearing every night. How come that was? Because that's a part of the play. Okay. Because that was developed on the east side, mm. in the in the uh, the village, the east village, and that in the east village of where Prabhupada came from India in okay. 1965. He came to settle there. And so the devotees would go out chanting to the park and Prabhupada would go to the park chanting. So that became part of the scene. Hmm. The hippies, the chanting, it was all like became part of, of what represent, was represented of the hippie movement. But Hare Krishna was a part of the hippie movement. It, it, except Prabhupada said, our teacher, Guru Dev Prabhupada, he said, we are not hippies. And they asked him, are you hippies? He said, no, we're not hippies. Then what are you? He says, we're happies. <laughs> <laughs> so I joined the happy movement, the Hare Krishna movement. So when I when I had to, I left to Canada, to Montreal, and that was 68, the summer of 68. And I didn't know it exactly at the time, but Prabhupada was there. So you see how things are falling in place. Mm. <laughs> Somehow, when we are coming to Krishna, there's all, when we're going to serve Krishna, He's making like the, the background so that we can gradually evolve to when the time comes, when the, when the opportunity presents itself, we can take it mm. and not uh, leave it aside for another lifetime, but take the opportunity. So I think the Lord was grooming me, little by little, so that I could accept Srila Prabhupada. So I went to Montreal, and Srila Prabhupada was there that summer, and I did feel some kind of special vibration in the city. I felt something very, very inspiring. I was happy to get, it was very unhappy for me to leave my friends and family in New York. 
but there was something going on in my heart, in my spirit that told me, foretold me of something great was going to come into my life. I had faith in that. And it didn't happen exactly till March. One time I saw the devotees on the campus of McGill University, which I got into the drama department immediately. They never questioned if I go to the school or not. Mm. So I was doing plays, and one time on the campus, and by the way, the first Krishna conscious literature came to that oh, Bhakti 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 by Bhakti Vinod Thakur in 1996. The, the very 18, birthday. 18, 1896. 18, I'm sorry, 1896. Yes. Right, right. And that's when Prabhupada is being born. Mm. And that's when the first literature is coming. Mm. And that's where I'm also going. So I'm falling somewhere in there. <laughs> Some remnant of something. But anyway, so I was going to Mill University and I saw, one time I saw some devotees and I remember that I saw Jai Pataka Maharaj. He was there. Hare Krishna! Oh Lord, Krishna conscious! And the principles, he said, uh, we have four principles, no meat eating. I said, oh, this is good. This is a good religion. Mm. It's a good path. Then he said, no intoxication. I said, oh. <laughs> no illicit sex, no girlfriends. Oh my gosh, it's very difficult. And no gambling. I think we can do that. But the other issues were not easy. You know, the, the meat eating, okay, no gambling, okay. But intoxication. And uh, no girlfriends, mm -hmm. you know, have to have a wife. So, anyway, so after seeing them some time, and even in that summer, my one of my encounters with a devotee was I went into a pharmacy. As I was going in, the door went open, it almost hit my foot and my leg, and it was a devotee. <laughs> so, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. It was Maya Vilata. I said, oh my God, later I know who she was. Okay. But she was out there. Hmm. <laughs> but anyway, so that was, uh, first of all, I looked like they looked like Indians because they had the Choki, the Sika, mm. both heads. And then I saw this lady coming out of this thing, almost ran me over with the door. <laughs> and she was like, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So I said, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh gosh, I said, what is this, you know? But anyway, one day in the McGill University newspaper, I saw an ad. It said, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Temple. So I said, oh, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Temple. Prasad, 12 noon. And vegetarian foodstuffs offered freely. So I said, oh, I have to go sometime. I must go. So one day when my dear friend, my girlfriend, had left to New York, she went back. I felt very sad. And I sat on a mountain, which is called Mount Real. The Royal Mountain, Montreal. Okay. And I sat up in that mountain. And I started to think of my life. I said, I want to dedicate my life to God. I'm tired of being so sinful. So today when I walk down from this mountain, I must make sure that my friends don't. And there was some kind of a concert like Jimi Hendrix. And I sat on this rock and I wasn't properly dressed in the cold, piercing wind of winter. And this was March of 1969. I felt this and I looked at the, in the silhouette was St. Joseph's Cathedral in Montreal. And then there was a graveyard below. And I said to myself, life, death, God. And you know what I thought? I should go see that temple today. I should go to that Krishna temple. So I got myself together and started walking down the mountain. Sure enough, Maya. Maya means Satan trying to pull you away. Say, hey, what are you doing, boy? Come on down. We're going to have some fun. There's some nice girls here. There's some nice things. Nice things to smoke, nice things to drink, everything. And I said, you know what? I'm sorry, I can't go, please. I'll see you later. That later would never come, thank God. Because I walked down, it's about 
two or three miles and I walked down finally looking for the temple and finally saw this old building. At, at, at that time Hare Krishna home was very poor. They had rented a bowling alley on the second floor of this building, which was no longer a bowling alley. But the, all the aisles went to the deities. Okay. <laughs> so when I walked into the... I smelled some incense and I thought to myself, wow, I must have smelled it this in another lifetime since that's a special. The masala incense was capturing my mind. And I walked, I knocked on the door, and one devotee came, bald head and shaven head. Hare Krishna. I had come around four o'clock, so the feast was over. Okay. And on Sunday, you know, you're doing your own religion, your own life, and you don't, you don't know exactly, you don't have the proper guidance, but at least I was fasting every Sunday. No eating. And I came into the temple, and there were some devotees there. I, mean, I can see that if I just go begin like this, it may take forever. I could speak for a hundred programs. You can, <laughs> you can see that. Anyway, so from the very beginning they said, uh, please come and eat a little prasad, a little mohan bog. And uh, of course they don't call it like that, but I know from my experience here before in Guyana and Trinidad when I came before in 1974. I visited both countries and as all you say I sowed some seeds and those seeds have... Maybe maybe you can tell us a little bit about that visit to Trinidad and Guyana because actually our program is there in Trinidad <laughs> and Guyana so maybe you yeah. can... And hello St. Lucia too. <laughs> <laughs> and Guyana very dear to my heart and Trinidad. I'm torn between which place is more dear to my heart, but let's. I love Trinidad and I love Guyana, very wonderful places. And the people, and all the people that assisted me when I, I had gone. So from those, that time in Montreal, six weeks later I was initiated by Srila Prabhupada and I met him. I went back to America okay. at all risks and I met him in Buffalo, New York. I was initiated April 19, 1969. But I was very inspired by Srila Prabhupada. I would like to spend some time, some time in the future, discussing what I felt. And, but one thing I saw that I wanted to assist him in his mission. I wanted to preach and open temples. and So the Lord fulfilled my desire because we, soon after we went to Berkeley with Hansa Dutta Himavati and we opened the temple of Berkeley. Then after 10 months in the movement I went to San Jose opened a temple. So ten months, barely a nine-month-old baby, <laughs> born and he's already preaching by Prabhupada's grace. This is the inspiration that our teacher gave us. He gave us so much love and attention and, and guidance and strength to do things that today I don't think I can do. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, Krishna Consciousness took me to Mexico where we opened our first Latin American temple. And simultaneously, I saw that by Kuntanath Prabhu mm. and Saradia, who was, they were, they also came to Trinidad. They were the original ones. Okay. They were the original devotees to come. Mm. I came eventually following in their footsteps here. Yeah. Mm. So they were the original ones. In fact, there's a story of that. <laughs> I will try to explain. But anyway, so from Mexico, I spent a couple of years. We. We built the, we got the temple, and that's the temple we have today. Mm -hmm. Same place. Same place. Okay. So uh, at that time, and hundreds of devotees came, and now they are also having Rathiyatra, and I know we're having Rathiyatra today here. So it's wonderful, festival of the chariots, festival of the Lord. So in Mexico, also there's thousands upon thousands of devotees. As I, I as seem a, to have been especially empowered to start new places. <laughs> yeah, because I get bored quick. <laughs> so I need a new challenge all the time. Okay. You know. So according to our nature, Krishna and Prabhupada will engage us. Prabhupada will engage us. Okay, you go. And when you go, make that temple in Mexico. I will go personally. Yeah. So I was saying, my goodness, I must do it right away. You know. So this was 1971. 
I arrived in Mexico Jan June 1st, 1971, June 2nd, 1972. Uh, we had opened the temple. There were hundreds of followers and devotees. It was like a miracle by His grace. But everyone was awaiting Prabhupada's arrival. So he came. It'll be 40 years, uh, 2012, this, this coming, uh, June 2nd, 2012 will be 40 years exactly since Srila Prabhupada visited Mexico. Wow, interesting. And after Mexico, I went to Venezuela. Oh. So from Venezuela, eventually I came to Trinidad. Mm. Because uh, by Kundanath Prabhu and Saradia, they had left. They had an unfortunate incident mm -hmm. that we can discuss some other time, but she was abused and so he left. And so I came to Trinidad everywhere I went. In every San Fernando way, every way, Chaguanas, uh, Port of Spain, everyone knew by Kuntana, the original Hare Krishna devotee and his wife, mm -hmm. Saradia, David Dasi. So everywhere I went, Oh, my Kuntanath, my Kuntanath, my Kuntanath. So I felt, mm. oh my goodness, I didn't know him at the time. Mm. So I thought, my God, why have I come here? <laughs> they don't want to see me, they want to see my Kuntanath Prabhu. Which is good, because later on I met my Kuntanath Prabhu, and I can understand why they found such a wonderful person as himself. So very humble and very nice devotee. So, but he told me a story when I met him in Los Angeles. Because after I spent time in Trinidad, some months. Before I left, Hari Dev here, yes. he helped me with another boy named Hari mm -hmm. and he offered his house and we used to preach from Port of Spain and go chanting. Okay. And then eventually Tarksha, who I, I got some devotees from Trinidad, initiated. Okay. There's a long list of names All right. and I sent to Prabhupada and Prabhupada would always accept anyone I sent. So you were based in Venezuela and you came across? No, then once I left Venezuela, I left for good. Oh, okay. So I was here in Trinidad for... All right. For the time I was going to be here, Venezuela was a thing of the past after oh, okay. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But while I was there, there were some visits of some devotees from Trinidad to Venezuela. Okay. As I see that going on now very nicely, I see... Yesterday I saw so many devotees from Venezuela. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually recently we had quite a number, some of them are here. Yes, wonderful. So. It's a yes. very wonderful thing. This cultural exchange, it makes it enriches everything. Yes. So, um, after I spent time, in, then we got to Maracas Bay. I rented a place in Maracas Bay. Okay. And then all the other devotees like Tariksha, Vamana, Pitambara, uh, Siddhajan, they all came to work with me. and we. So it seems from that, then they moved to St. Augustine, but I already had gone. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So just when they moved to St. Augustine, I left just before. And then I went to Guyana. Okay. So, every time I was traveling through Trinidad, everyone would say, by Kunta? And then they see me, they go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but by Kunta, when I went to Los Angeles, he said, I was in Guyana. I went to quarantine. And as I went to the square, people came. Multitudes of people came. And they looked at me and said, Oh, we thought you were Chitsukaram, the last. <laughs> so, so I said, See how Krishna is. In Guyana, everyone remembered me because I was maybe probably the first devotee of mm. Prabhupada to go there. Okay. And here I wasn't the first. But um, I want to say that I really love uh, the island and I'm very grateful after 38 years the devotees have come together. Mm. and. They have paid my ticket here, <laughs> and I don't like flying much, but I, I said to myself, it's my responsibility to see these devotees and see how the movement has progressed. And I'm so impressed that everywhere I go, I see Hare Krishna. People, you know, many kilometers away, there was one man, he was there chanting, and he was, oh, so I, every, all the streets have signs, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. So I'm sure Prabhupada is very pleased with all of you in St. Lucia. Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago, um, I'm sure that Srila Prabhupada is so much happy with all of you and I pray that he continue blessing you with all making this island and this Guyana and St. Lucia countries and all of the Caribbean Krishna conscious 
Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you, so much. Much. thank you very much, Sukhananda Prabhu, for being on the program. Hare Krishna, I'm Rajarshida saying Hare Krishna. Do join us again next week for another presentation. Hare Krishna.